Welcome back to the Optimized Career Solutions YouTube channel. I am Kara Dennison, and this month we are talking all about how to grow your career in 2024, which is right around the corner. And this week we are talking about goal setting. If you haven't checked out the Career Advancement Academy podcast, make sure that you do so. You can check out the full episode here on this YouTube channel where we talk about the one part of goal setting that can set career back, uh, careers back years. And we go over some really, really important stuff about goal setting and being intentional around goals and what can really set some high achievers back when it comes to goal setting, why goals fail. And if you're thinking about setting a new year's resolution coming up, why you can potentially forget about that new year's resolution or move away from it and how to not do that and set some resolutions or goals that will be successful for your, your personal life, your career, etc. in the new year. But today we're going to talk a little bit about making the most of your career growth by getting personal in your goal setting, right? Because let's be honest, right? When you set goals, there's an emotional aspect to it. It becomes emotional. There's emotional barriers. There's that thought of, am I going to fail? Do I have a little bit of a fear of failure? What if I succeed? And then what is my life going to look like if I, uh, succeed in achieving that goal? What about that imposter syndrome that comes up? And of course that change, change is inevitable. And what is, again, my life going to look like if I don't meet this goal, or if I even do meet this goal, this goal. So what we want to talk about is the fact that there are emotional, uh, ties to goal setting. And there's been a study done around medical students that the medical students negative emotions following goal failure was linked to higher negative emotions and then them leading to setting smaller goals the next day. And so as you can see in this study, and you've probably experienced this in your life, I've experienced it in my life where if I set these goals and they're maybe aggressive goals or stretch goals, and then I don't meet them. I'm now perpetuating that negative emotional cycle of, well, I guess I proved myself right. I am a failure. I'm not going to be able to do as good as I thought I was. So I'm going to set myself up for success maybe, or maybe it's out of fear and I'm going to set smaller goals. And now I'm not moving forward in my career or my personal achievement or whatever as much as I really wanted to. And so we're here to try and break that cycle by one. The first step is self-awareness. We want to be aware that this is happening so that we can overcome those barriers and move forward. So the first part is really having empathy understanding the emotions and the feelings that come up when we're trying to set goals because hey we're human beings we're experiencing this human life and a lot of times external factors are going to come into play things are going to change right priorities in our lives are going to change and that is not a reflection of you and what you set out to do is just a reflection of life happening right and so we want to really employ those emotional intelligence strategies as much as you possibly can and some tools in your toolbox so that you can move forward with achieving your goals and setting realistic goals so that you can go and achieve them successfully without some of those emotions. So what are some emotional intelligence strategies? Well, we've talked about visualization. In fact, you can check out that video on our channel here where last month we talked about some mindset hacks to really improve and advance your career. And visualization was a huge one when you can actually visualize yourself achieving that goal or visualize yourself in a state of your life where you've already achieved that goal. What's really great is your brain can't necessarily tell the difference between what react, what is happening in reality and what you're happening is happening when you're visualizing something. And so when you visualize yourself walking through the steps of achieving that goal, it's almost like you're telling your brain, Hey, we've already done this. When you go to do that goal or uh, execute on it, it's almost like your brain saying, Oh, we've already been here. We've already done that. This is not as hard as we expected it to be. It's something that I have 
implemented so many times in my life when I have to go and train someone on my team or complete a house project or do something. What I do is I actually take a couple of minutes and I stop before I go and do that. And I visualize myself walking through each step and then I go and execute. And what's really exciting about that is instead of walking into each step, feeling kind of lost, feeling like an imposter and not knowing and feeling almost like a, a toddler trying to take that step and not sure if the ground's going to be there. I feel like I can move forward confidently because I've already done so in my mind and I visualize that. So when you visualize your goals being achieved, it maintains your emotional connection to that goal too, because you can visualize and, and feel that sense of accomplishment and you can feel that sense of confidence going through those steps instead of a sense of fear or unsureness, right? A journal prompt, if you are someone who journals, is before you go through those goals or before you even set your goals, you can journal out from this prompt, what does your ideal professional success look like and what internal or external obstacles seem to be in the way. When you list out those obstacles and explore maybe where those internal obstacles come from, it's going to maybe feel a little uncomfortable when you do this, but what we're doing is we're shedding light. This is a, a flashlight that, <laughs> that I'm, you know, using on my journal here. We're shedding light. I was like, oh, hey, that's not so scary anymore. I understand what's maybe in my way and I can address this. I can talk it out with a therapist. I can talk it out with a coach. I can talk it out with myself and I can really understand, okay, this is what's in my way. This is what might come up when I'm going after that goal. Now I know to be aware of it, right? And it's going to make that goal setting and that goal achieving a little bit easier because now it's like instead of driving at night with no headlights on, you flipped on the high beams and you can see what might be coming around the bend. I want to talk a little bit about grit. Grit is something that we've heard time and time again, right? There's been TED Talks about grit, but what is grit when it comes to achieving long-term goals. Grit is that secret sauce because grit is where passion meets perseverance. And having grit is merely, is not merely about the effort involved in overcoming those obstacles, but it's about the deep commitment to a goal that drives that effort. So it's not just determination. It's about determination fueled by a passion right? And that's why when your goals are linked to your internal values, to your passion, to what you really want out of life, it's easier to be determined and persistent in those goal settings because they are tied to what you are excited about. They're tied to internal values. So while talent is important, grit plays a key role in that long-term success through that sustained effort over time. So what are some strategies that we can employ in order to really tap into that grit and achieve some of those goals? Well, the first is really going to be self-awareness, right? Recognizing emotions and the effects that these emotions have on other people, on ourselves and on goal setting can really help for grit channeling negativity found through self-awareness into objectives rather than allowing it to derail your efforts, right? So when you're self-aware, you're allowing your grit to say, Hey, this is happening and I'm going to channel this into objectives. I'm going to channel this into overcoming this instead of letting it take me out of the game, it's going to channel into renewed focus on this goal instead of allowing me to quit. Right. Along the lines, another emotional intelligent tool is going to be self-regulation. So when that comes up, when these emotions come up, when we encounter that emotional roadblock, grit allows us to employ disciplined strategies such as mindfulness, reflective exercises, uh, taking a break, regulation, right? By pressing on our vagus nerves, potentially a um, breathing exercise, right? In order for us to stay the course, 
right? Grit channels emotional reactions into strategic responses towards that goal instead of again saying, whoop, too much, I'm out. No, we're going to self-regulate because we have our eyes on the prize, right? And finally, that grit is going to channel us into motivation leveraging a deep emotional commitment to that goal it propels us to persevere through challenges and setbacks where whereas others are going to give up right so again grit channels motivation to continuously push forward because you believe in your ability to complete that goal because you're determined and you have a passion towards it a tip for you an actionable tip for you excuse me when it comes to achieving this goal is to really break it down into one achievable steps, right? When you look at how do you, how do you eat a whole elephant, right? It's by one bite at a time. And so when you're looking at a big goal, sometimes that goal feels very, very overwhelming, right? Of course it does. We, as high achievers, we set lofty goals, but when you look at that whole goal, it can get overwhelming and you're like, wow, I don't even know where to start. So a good tactical tip is to break it down into small milestones that are easy to easier to achieve. And on the flip side of that coin, a very, very, very important part is to celebrate those wins along the way. Right. And I also want you to track your emotional wins. Did you look at the whole goal and get overwhelmed and then self-regulate and then break it down into milestones? That's a win that's a win because you didn't give up. Right. And so I want you to track these moments of overcoming emotional challenges and meeting milestones because high achievers need those moments of celebration to cement into our psyche. Hey, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're making progress, progress over perfection. Right. So that when those self doubts, when those imposter syndrome feelings come up, we can point to our successes and our wins. Here are a couple other um, strategies to help activate that grit and to keep moving forward in our goals. That self-awareness piece, right? Start a mood meter. If you are finding that the emotional part of goal setting and achievement, maybe people pleasing, perfectionism, um, the victim mentality, all of those things start coming in when things aren't going right for you. If that's happening, start a mood meter. You can start one literally in a notebook, right? You can just start tracking it. You can get an app on your phone or you can get fancy with it. Start like a little bullet journal where you have all the moods and you kind of color it in, whatever works for you. But what we're looking here for is patterns. When you're feeling a certain way, how are you when it comes to accomplishing certain things in your goals? When you're looking for patterns, understanding your feelings and how they correlate to productivity and goal setting, you can use these insights to plan your tasks around the times you feel most positive and capable. Because I got to tell you, when you're white knuckling through a negative emotion to try and get something done, it's going to take you two, three, four, five times longer than if you're in a great mood and you're feeling the flow, right? And so what I always tell my clients, what I tell myself, my husband and my team is that, hey, if you're not feeling great, the, your number one priority is to get yourself in a, to a better place before you tackle anything on your plate, because it's going to be that much more productive and efficient when you're in a better place. A next uh, tip is going to be that self-regulation. I like to do that five, five, five breathing, right? It's going to be in for five, hold for five, out for five. When you do this and you do this five times in a row, right? It's going to help you regulate your breathing and calm you down. If you're maybe breathing too fast or you forgot to breathe deep um, and you're breathing too shallowly because of some emotions that are coming up from maybe imposter syndrome, fail, fear of failure, change, etc. Finally, a motivation map. When you're writing down your ultimate goal in the center and you're surrounding it with images or words that represent why this goal is important to you, this, like your deepest motivations, the real reasons why your values, this is going to be something that you can point to and keep looking at for when your drive is waning, when you're just not feeling it, right? You can really spend a couple of minutes reconnecting with that map, that motivation and reconnecting with your why when maybe you're not feeling it. 
it's really important and vital to recognize the emotional aspects of goal setting, especially if you're a high achiever. And if this is coming up over and over again, and you're wondering, Hey, I like to achieve, but when I set goals, I'm, I'm having issues in accomplishing them, right? Maybe there's something internally or emotionally that is stalling you out and is becoming an obstacle for you. If that's so take a look inside, journal it out because self-awareness is going to be that first step and allowing you to kind of tap into that grit so that you can move forward. I would love for you to kind of tell me in the comments, what stood out for you? What's your why? What's a goal that you're going to be setting in the new year? Let me know so I can come back. And I hope that you have a great week. Make sure to stay tuned for next week when we share other amazing topics on how you can advance your career in the new year. Have a great day.